How's the mood, Gaffer, after Saturday? Uh, it's excellent. You know, I think uh, it's been a really positive week. Um, again, we're going to watch him last night's game with the uh, with the kids in the FA Youth Cup. Uh, we played against a, a good good team from up in the North East and uh, the scoreline was fantastic but the way the youth played was, was excellent you know and I'm seeing that synergy from the youth level to the first team and it's certainly cascading down so you know, it, we've had a really really positive week you know from the win at uh, on Saturday uh, and the manner I think in which we which we took uh, Cambridge on you know spoke to a few of their players after and some of my players have spoke to those and they have you know, really dominated teams all season and that's one thing that they pride themselves on, that physicality and that strength as a unit and uh, they couldn't bring that to the table because our football player was, was so forceful. So uh, delighted with the performance and then like I keep saying, if you get the performance right, we really do concentrate on that, you get the performance right on the training ground, the results will come you know, and to keep a clean sheet, certainly in the second half when they pressed us a little bit. Uh, you know, was excellent. I, I look at the chances, you know, created even second half, you know, Nicky's at the bar, uh, Courtney's one-on-one, -on -one, the little lob, and, uh, and Nicky Adams balling for Lowy, that's just, the defender's just, you know, caught out, so even in the second half we could have really turned the score into something uh, quite profitable, but 2-0, delighted with it. Has Nicky been listening? Has he calmed down a little? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. He's, he's taking everything in, you know, from the training ground, he's taking things in. Um, you know, he's, he's in our office more, sort of learning and studying the game, and, and that weren't here for him. You know, when, when he, he first, you know, when he was first at the club, that the resource we've got now and, and the video work we do and, and the an analytical work we do, um, that weren't there then. So, you know, I think he's he's gone out and he's played his football and just played off instinct a lot, a lot of the time, and he's had a fantastic career. But I do think that we can really help. Uh, you know, make Nicky Adams the finished article, and then the finished article does mean, you know, that end bit, that end product, and and he's as the seasons progressed, he's got better and better at that. It's not just Nicky though; it's Holden. Even Ryan Lowell would say he's learning things. Yeah, but you know, I'm the, I'm the other way. You know, I, I, I'm the other way myself. I learn things off this group, you know, daily. Um, you know, there'll be certain things Nards and Ryan Lowell teach me. I wasn't a striker. And uh, you know you learn off them, you watch them, you watch them do certain things. I'll go away, I'll tweak it. You know I'm learning off Ben Fortune, I'm learning off Brassy. I think it's just one of my environments that we share together. We're certainly in it together, and um, you know you can learn. I think Scott Quigg said it when he come in. You know I've got really big ears to to always keep listening and learning. You're always in an environment to learn and. Uh, just watching the telly and watching the best and, and you know it's everywhere, learning's everywhere, you know, whether that's Jamie Carragher, Gary Neville on the TV, um, it's everywhere, it's absolutely everywhere. Sat in a stand last night, you know, watching the youth team and, and learn a few things that we've tweaked around the training ground, learn from the youth team. So, you know, we've got we've got an environment where no one's embarrassed to ask questions, um, and nobody's embarrassed to, you know, to say that we, we've got it wrong if we've got it wrong. So at the minute uh, it's an environment that you know, we, we're flourishing and uh, long may that continue. Watching, you've touched on it already, the youth team last night, but for me, it's just like watching a younger version of the first team. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Saturday morning represented, Saturday morning against Walsall, that represented something for me that was almost identical. Um, I'd say the 13s and the under 13s play exactly the same way as the first team. That is like watching them in the first team. Um, the one that excites me is the under nines. They play exactly like the first team. They are phenomenal. Our under nines, and uh, we're trying to get it right through the system. So we're making massive strides. Uh, but you know, last night you saw players out there who, who wanted the ball, had the courage to want the ball. Probably the biggest thing of the night was when Rudds uh, made a mistake for the goal. But his next pass, he's fizzed it to Ray. You know, it took some real courage and and uh, bravery to do that pass. You know, and that, them are the things that please me. I don't, I don't pe think people actually understand possession football, they see it, uh, but the science behind it, one thing you need is courage to get on the ball under pressure, and my team display that in, in abundance. Got to mention him, Anthony Dudley, 16 goals in 14 games, is he politely tapping on your door or is he smashing it in? Um, he's getting better, you know, and, and again, and, and I think Duds is learning off, um, off George Miller. You know, George Miller is probably the hardest working apprentices that I've come across in a long time and 
you know, he embarrasses people to run George with his work commitment. Uh, and Duds is getting that, you know, the shift he's putting in now to the shift that he was putting at the start of the season is, is unrecognisable. Um, he wants to be part of that team. And all good strikers, when they go through a barren spell, there's one thing in common. They've stopped working as hard as, as when they got in, in, you know, in that spell. And mm. you look at the Robbie Fowlers and how they score goals, and Alan Shearers. They, these guys, they, they, they work the times. Of, you know, I played here with Dave Nugent. Dave Nugent made his own goals at times because of the work rate he put in. <coughs> Vardy's the same. You know, if you look at all Vardy's goals through uh, Halifax to Fleetwood to Leicester, it's sheer work rate. I look at Mikael Smith and uh, Aaron McLean when they was at Peterborough. You know, there's no secret that they scored goals when they when they worked daggers, when daggers Chris Dagnall scored goals and Alpha Lafondra. It's a common denominator. You you work hard, you work to your maximums, you get chances. And Duds is doing that now. There's no doubt about that. He's got time stand still for Duds when he's in them goal scoring moments, which is important for a striker. And uh, you know, he's got that. So yeah, he's 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 turned a massive corner, but um, that's come from the sheer hard work that he's been doing. How difference is he now to the Anthony Dudley we saw at Radcliffe Borough? It's night and day. It really is night and day. I think, uh, you know, I think he, he got it then, but I don't think it fully sunk in. I think he's he's been around kiddo. He's been around the environment. Uh, we've got a new strength conditioning coach in, and you can see his body dy dynamics changed as well. He looks more powerful. His, sh his shoulders look rounded. He has got you know a bit more upper body power. Um, Kiddo's been doing a lot of singular work with him, and um, he's progressing. He's progressing beautifully. So, you know, we've got someone in there that, uh, in that setup, in that environment, he's doing really well. It's a bit of a different environment, and you know, Courtney is seeing seeing that now. You know, when mm. when Pabs is leaving a bit on him, and Cameron, you know, to, to the step up between, um, you know, the youth and first team is pretty massive. You know, certainly at this club, you know, with the intensity that we train at and the frequency. Um, you know, but Kiddo's getting that with with his team, so things take time. I thought Burge was was outstanding again last night. You know, Scotty Burgess, he come with us for a while, and then he's gone back away from it. He's doing, he's working with uh, with Kiddo and, and learning his trade. And I thought he was out, outstanding last night. So some really really good performances throughout the team. Is there any of them the, these kids looking towards the first team? Are they going to get a chance this season? Are they still a way off? Probably not at the minute because you know the ambition. Uh, is you know to get out of this league and with that ambition um, becomes pressure and I don't want to put that pressure on on young kids. They're in the development phase of the career, uh, whereas the first team's in the winning phase of their career. And um, you know I don't want a situation where we're developing players but losing football matches. Mm. That's not what you know we've been assigned to do and I've been brought in here to do. We've got to win football matches and develop players. So. You're Nathan Cameron's because they physically can, and you Craig Jones and your Danny Mays and your Danny Roses. They're developing, but we're winning football matches with them, with them players, you know, in situ. Um, and that's 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 key. That that's key that you know we we will become a development club and and a club that has assets. Um, but it's not for the here and now. You know, the first objective is to be competitive uh, and, and have a real ambition and drive to get out of the league. And uh, having too many projects sometimes can confuse that. I think problems in the past has been that youth players have developed, but at a slower rate than the first team have developed. Are, are they coming along at the same pace? Or are they faster? Are they no, you, you never. You, you, that, that's the difficult one. That is the difficult one because you know your training programs are just by the fact of, of the physical stature and the physical nature of players and and the physicalities that you're always probably twenty thirty percent down. Hmm. But what you've got to do is get them tactically, technically. And, and as near physically as you can so that when they join in the sessions they're not overawed by it and that's a process that we, we're working on but we work closely with uh, we work closely with, with Kiddo and his team and, and, and you know and, and I certainly work closely with, with the academy to try and implement what we're trying to do there but uh, it takes time you know anything worth waiting for takes time uh, but everything whatever, you know, the society wants here and now we all want here and now that, that's what we want you know, a new iPhone comes out and everyone's sick of the five, they want the six, and that's just society. You can't do that with development. Sometimes you have to, you know, develop it, but, you know, it's like with Foldsy. We might have to just wait a little bit before nature, you know, makes him, uh, makes his body fill out into the unit that we think he's going to be. Saturday, the FA Cup, why is it so special? It just is to me, you know, 
I've been brought up on the street. I've been brought up, uh, you know, with with two brothers, and all we did is play football, you know. And the two lads I got brought up with, the six Smith brothers, you know, one ended up at Man United, one ended up at um, Blackburn, and that's all we ever did. Just played football, 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 and uh, that's all I know. So when you get an opportunity to play in the FA Cup. Um, any game in the FA Cup, and I just think it's it's, it's for everyone. The FA Cup's for everyone. Everyone's got an opportunity before the before the ball's kicked to, to potentially play at Wembley, and you you know you've got to have them dreams. And it's it's the finest cup competition in the world domestically for me. I love it. Um, I love the fact that I was a lower league player that had an opportunity to play in some fantastic cup ties myself, and try and pick your wits against the best, and um, it does that. But uh, you know, certainly, it's, 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 the, it's the, the FA Cups for the fans, isn't it? You know, every fan, you know, who ever dreamed about playing football, um, lives for the FA Cup and breathes it. And, and I love the fact that non-league clubs can can have the opportunity to pit the wit, pit the wits against teams from higher divisions. It's, it's unique. And the Lemstead Town, what do we know about them? We know a lot. You know, we certainly know a lot. We've done as much intel as we could until the draw, when the draw was made. Um, you know that's something that uh, we pride ourselves on, being meticulous in our planning and preparation. Uh, we've got a good report from Saturday's game. We've got some footage on them, and uh, we've already started the process. You know, Tuesday we went through their team, the possible shape, uh, how they might line up if they don't line up with them individuals uh, who, who potentially could be other replacements. So we've we've gone through it in detail at the start of the week, like we always do, and we'll slowly build up that picture. So. When we play on Saturday, the lads know exactly who they'll be coming up against, and um, you know what we need to do, the strengths um, of the team and the weaknesses of the team. But we certainly uh, haven't planned any different. Um, you know, it's a cup game, it's a cup competition, and uh, we want to be highly competitive in it. Are you wary of them? I'm always wary. You know, I, I never underestimate anyone. You know, whether it's a team or whether it's a person on the street, I uh, don't underestimate anyone. It's one of my one of my big things, you know, don't un underestimate your, your opposition, your opponent, your enemy, because uh, the day you do, that's the day that you'll show your weakness. So we've really put a lot of time into we put a lot of time into um, all the games we play. We choose what details we give the players. You know, I don't give them everything. I give them what I feel they need to get because it is about us. You know, Emma are coming to our own ground. They're coming to our patch where we we're fantastic. And, uh, and where the lads love playing and there's a real synergy you know, the minute between the pitch and, and what we're trying to do uh, off the pitch by bringing people in so there's a feel good factor um, what, I won't, what I won't allow to come in is a complacency factor mm. you know, the feel good factor is because you do, we're doing the right things we're, we're covering ground, we're covering kilometres we're running for each other, we're making angles for each other uh, the runability in the team at the minute is outstanding uh, and that comes from the training ground. So we're putting the work in, putting the shift in, and, uh, and Saturday will be no different. And if I smell that, then uh, that's up to me as manager to make sure I, I act on that. Is this the type of game where you think such and such a player may need a break? I'll give them a rest this weekend and bring somebody else in, or give other players chances? Not at all. No, I, I don't agree with that. You know, I think uh, it's a rhythm. You know, you, you, you take players to a threshold, and then you see if you can go beyond that threshold. That's what I believe in as a coach, and um, you know, keep keep driving players forward. Uh, I think sometimes you, you can actually rest players too much, and, and they become, you know, it, normal is what you're used to. That's what normal is. So if you're going to say to a player, "Listen, have three days off, and then play Saturday," somewhere along the line, you're going to get uh, a player that becomes unfit. So I like keeping players in a rhythm. Uh, we've been we've had a very settled team, and um, you know, it's something that. We'll be picking players on training performance and, uh, and on game performance. And um, in an ideal world, if you had 26 players, you know, and you could rotate and rest players, but we don't. And, and we've designed it like that. We've got a small squad, uh, but we've got an incredibly competitive squad. No Tom Souls Saturday. Does that give somebody else a chance? Well, you know, it, 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 it's an opportunity for someone to. You know, Tom's been fantastic. His consistency has been brilliant, and that's one thing that when I first come to the building, you know, <laughs> you're excited if you can name Tom Saws in your team as a manager. You know, you get that tinge of what well, I want to see what he can do today. I love, uh, you know, I love what Tom Saws represents. But then you're disappointed because you know he's injured or he's just 
there's something just nagging away at him. Um, but he's been consistent, he's trained every session and um, you know it's, he's, he's going to be certainly a miss but that miss gives someone an opportunity to come in and, and, and find their form and find their feet and uh, you know it's an opportunity someone can step into now and, and try and take that, that slot. The FA Cup ball, different ball for this competition, is there any difference between a normal ball? Well the keepers will tell you the rest you know and the keeper coaches they'll tell but it's round. Hmm. That's one thing I do know. I was expecting a square one with all the, <laughs> with all the uh, hype on it. Do you know what I mean? And it's not. It's round. Hmm. So catch it, it's kick a it. It's a ball. It's a round ball. Hmm. That's what I can guarantee everyone who wants to look at it. It's a round pink ball. And does it make a difference? It doesn't. It doesn't make one iota of a difference. Yeah. But, oh, it moves different. It does this different. I think the World Cup one did. Is it the John... John Burley or John Burley bot. You know, from looking at that and seeing the way it, it moved, hmm. I think that there was... There was certainly a difference in that, you know, it was expensive, I got two of them for Billy and Bob and it cost me a bit of money that one. <laughs> um, but it's a round pink ball, so I, you know, I can't really say much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Injuries, how are we? We're, we're you know, we, we're okay, we're okay, we've, we've had a fantastic run up to now. You know, we've been a small squad, we've had a fantastic run. Uh, Nards sees another specialist tonight on his problem. Um, we've got Joe Widdison who come back from Morecambe with a slight knock, so you know Wids Wids won't be available. And um, Keel Keel had a bit of a setback. You know, it's one of them injuries that it goes along nicely, and then it, the last bit just takes a bit longer than you think. So Keel's yeah, Keel will hopefully train with us. If not Friday, he's he's moved to his last phase now. So if he, if he doesn't train Friday. Then it'll certainly be uh, Sunday, Monday. Then will be his first real session with the first team. So, yeah, it'd be good to have Keel back and add a bit of competition in there. Um, but you know, we, we, we're, we're we're okay. We're okay. Something that we put massive emphasis on. You know, our our programs and, and implementation. I, I put massive emphasis on that. Um, and, and, and again, you know, I, you want to be hundred percent. But it's we've had about 19 to 95 percent players been been able to to join in training or joining matches this season. So it's been fantastic up to now, and I think that's because of the detail we put into into Tenerife and the detail we put into our pre-season. Um, you know, I brought Kelvin off because of precautionary. I didn't want that to turn into a two-week injury, so we've managed that injury really well, um, and Kelvin will be available for that. So. You know, it's that communication, we've got quite a good one, but I, I do get frustrated with it. I, I do want, you know, 100% and I'm probably, I've got to probably reset my my target on that. Joe Thompson made the bench last couple of games. How's he doing? How's his progress? Do you know what? He's, uh, we thought he'd be further up, further on than he was, um, but that was just guesswork. We couldn't go off anything or there was no data out there to support our first uh, initial reaction that, you know, by... By the end of September, we wanted him really pushing and driving forward. Uh, it's, by, it's bit by bit though with Joe, he's mm -hmm. certainly looking stronger, we've done loads of power work and power running with him um, he, and, and he's definitely getting stronger and looking stronger so you know, it's been a real bonus that. Um, we got the times wrong on that, we thought he'd be a lot closer than he was. But uh, you know it's it's, it's an unusual situation which happens to Joe. So I think times the mm. times the healer on that one. Does it easy your way? That? Does he know that? Yeah, he's, he's been disappointed because the first target we set, he's, he's you know he's gone past that and he's not been where he wants to be on that. So Joe's disappointed, but he's reset and he's uh, he's back focusing on on the next stage, if you like, of uh, of him getting getting to maximum power. I think that's the big thing that we need from Joe: maximum power output. Because if we don't. You know, his body's not going to be able to uh, get through the, the rigours of you know, 90 minutes and, and that's key that we do that. Just touching on Tuesday night Tranmere, is, is that going to be a tougher game than the league game with Tranmere because of the change in manager? You know, the, the previous manager Rob, that, that I said it in the programme notes I think the week after that, them players tried and they tried a leg, they really did, they put everything into the game, uh, it was a tough contest and um, you know they give it everything they had so they certainly didn't lie down or, or was lame. Uh, they gave Rob everything on, on the day. Um, 
you know, Mickey's gone in there, made a couple of new additions, and um, again, it's a trophy that uh, we want to win and they want to win. So I'm, it'll be very competitive and very tough. But uh, again, the, you know, they're coming to 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 our our own ground where the form's been fantastic, and you know, um, we've got a certain way of playing that. Uh, is, is fluid and dominant, so you know we will we, we, we'll be concentrating on what we do and how we go about our business um, in that game. What's the situation with the low knees for the, the next two games? In terms of can they, can they both play TK and Courtney? Yeah, they can. Yeah, yeah. We've had permission off um, off Everton and permission off Rochdale, so we we're good to go on that. They can they can be involved in uh, Saturday's game. And this obviously must be a special competition for you as a manager because you had the cup run with Barnsley as well. Yeah, you know I. I I love the FA Cup. You know, we in that when I was at Barnes, we beat uh, Burnley that season. We beat, uh, we progressed and, and beat Hull. Then we beat MK Dons. You know, to get in the in the fifth round to to play Man City. So we we got that opportunity. It was poor again. Well, it, you know, things didn't go right against Man City. I picked the the balance of the team was wrong, but the occasion and, and what I learned that day uh, has probably stood me in incredible stead. And you know, as a manager now, because. One, I've, I've tried to get the balance right. I always think to that game, back to that game, have I got the balance right in my team selection um, because of, of, of that game and, and what we didn't do against Man City. So I've loved the FA Cup from being a young player um, and now you know becoming a manager, special cup. You sort of know what, what a cup run can do because people say that you know it sort of deteriorates away from the league form, but you still stayed up that year even with the cup run at Barnes. Yeah, it does. It um, it all adds to competition. It adds to belief. It adds to a, a winning habit. You know, habits are a key in any industry or in sport. You know, good habits are key, and uh, you know, you, you still want that clean sheet. You still want to turn your your forward playing to goals, and that doesn't matter whether it's the, you know FA Cup, Capital Cup, Johnson's Paints, or, or the league. So I want to see good performance. That's one thing that you know I'll be demanding from the the players on Saturday um, because. It doesn't really matter what it is, it's 11 v 11 and uh, we have to, one thing we'll be doing is, is performing to our maximum. Because people say that sort of the cup might have lost its magic in recent years but you only need to sort of look at the lower league clubs that have done well, even people like Wigan to, to know that it's still still magic isn't it? Yeah, you know, I spoke to our guys last week, you know, they got beat off uh, Halifax, you know, the prize with that was, was Charlie playing at the, uh, Bradford. And you know you could see and feel and, and the hurt and the disappointment from not getting the um, it's a cup. They, they beat Bamba Bridge. I think it was two and a half thousand. The police had to put it on Twitter that please, no more people turn up to the game. That's what it does to you. You know the FA Cup draws a crowd, draws people in, um, and it'll always have that magic experience. It doesn't matter what the you know the big boys do and the Premiership people do and the foreign owners that if they don't understand this cup. The fans understand it. The English fans, British fans understand this competition, and that's why it'll always remain special. And two cup games at home in four days. Four of your next five league games this month for at home. It's, it's a big month, isn't it? Heading into Christmas. We've come through a tough month, you know, with with Shrewsbury and Southend away. Uh, you know, a couple of tough games in Wimbledon. We've come through a tough month, and the points total weren't where it where I wanted it. You know, but we sat two points off the top. And um, and you know we're we're in two good cup competitions. So you know we've uh, we've assessed it. We've seen where we are, and uh, we've got a we've got a great month to look forward to. And uh, you know I always look forward to to the next month or next game, and um, and that's something you know we're planning pretty meticulously for. I know you said at the weekend you were having a recruitment meeting yesterday. Did, did that go well? Really well, really well. So uh, you know hopefully after. It was a bit difficult because of the championship games. Um, we, we made a lot of call inroads and, and phone calls, um, and as, as today and tomorrow develops, you know we should have real movement on that that we're trying to do. Um, so, but now the re recruit meeting we have them once a month, and um, and they're special. They really are. You know the brainstorming that goes on in them, uh, the different ways that we look at certain deals. Um, you know we try and cover all bases. So. We've, we've, we're have we open for two or three more additions um, and that will develop before the 27th of November. You know, we, we've obviously got a timeline on it because the window closes um, and, I'll, I, you know, it's, it's not a sob story or anything like that. It's the truth. Statistically, we've not got um, a big squad. So, you know, we do need to add to it um, to get through 
um, November, but it's really December, that's the key area that you've got to get through to, to, to January, the next time you can either strengthen or, um, you know, or, or, or add, add to what you're doing. And finally, just does, that, does NARD sort of, what the, the, what comes back from the specialist, does that affect things, does that make things more... Absolutely, yeah, yeah you know, I think um, whether, whether we can manage the injury site or whether he needs some uh, surgical intervention, that's something that we'll only know tonight. We've got the two different scenarios, we've worked on that, we've talked about it and discussed it and planned it, um, so we've had to have other options, but at least we've got, you know, it's not happening on the 26th of November, it's happening now, so we've got enough time to reset and, and refocus our attention on, on the type of player that we're trying to bring in. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, guys.